All right, so if you're looking to create a spice business, I'm gonna give you 27 tax deductions that you may or may not be aware of. And if you're starting a spice business from home, there's even more tax benefits to doing that. Now, really quick, I am not an accountant. I am definitely not an accountant, but I wanna give you these. You should definitely write them down, take them to your accountant, and let them know that these are items that could be potentially used as deductions. If you start a small business at home, I'm gonna go through this list. We're gonna to get to it right now. All right, so we're back and welcome back to Marketing Food Online. So if this is your brand new video, the first video you've ever seen on Marketing Food Online 2. We have two channels set up, Marketing Food Online and Marketing Food Online 2, which offers a variety of even more resources absolutely free. So be sure to hit the subscribe button and definitely ask us any questions that you have. We'd love to build videos around you guys and your questions. So this is gonna be 27 tax deductions for a spice business. Now, some of these will actually be tax deductions that you can take advantage of if you happen to be starting a business at home. Most all food businesses that have actually ever existed, believe it or not, have actually started at home. So if you're just getting started and you're under the cottage food laws, almost every state allows spice businesses to be created at home. There's gonna be a handful of these that are gonna be applied specifically for home-based businesses like yours. So let's dive into this list. I got 27 of them. So number one, incorporation. So now if you incorporate yourself at home as a spice business, as an LLC, a C Corp or S Corp, however way you choose to do your business entity, the expenses incurred by trying to incorporate your business at home is actually tax deductible. That's gonna be a business expense. If you go through online, you can check down the resources down below this video in the description. If you wanna even do it online, you can create your LLC online. I have was one company specifically that we love, uh, that we work, we, I uh, have a link down below that actually can let you do this for free. You can actually incorporate for free plus the state filing fee, okay? The state filing fee is something that every state applies to a brand new LLC, and of course that can't be for free, but the actual filing is free. Check out that link down below. So number two, business license. If you have an expense, which you will, uh, that you're gonna incur for a business license in the city or county that you're in, be sure to check to see how much you're spending and give that to your accountant. The cost for your business license, which is normally an annual fee, uh, can be anywhere between about $50, $75, or about $125. They're not very expensive. That is something that also is a tax deduction for your spice business. Number three, lawyer's fees. Now, if you obviously use any lawyer for your business, and whether it be lawyer uh, uh, advice for any type of legal advice if you're going to create an entity, if you need legal advice for anything that is uh, related to the law in regards to your small business, that is also something that can be tax deductible as well. Number four, you're going to have a website. Now, if you're going to pay a website designer to create your website for your spice business, that too is an expense you are incurring because you are creating a website. Uh, that unless you end up doing this on your own, you have someone do it for you, that fee, you need to make sure you print a receipt for that. Website designers are not cheap. They can be very expensive, but that's also a good thing because that's a big write-off for your business, okay? Number five, website hosting. Now, whether you make a website yourself or if you have a website designer make one for you, you're gonna need a monthly hosting account. That means that that is a website like either GoDaddy, uh, Shopify, or Weebly. They're going to host the website. That normally runs between about 40 to maybe 50, maybe $60. Normally it's around 40 to $50 a month and you can get the website hosted um, for that and that is also an expense for your spice business. Now, number six, here we go. Now we're getting into the actual product. Now, packaging. If you decide to go with uh, tin cans for your spices, uh, glass bottles, lids, containers, plastic bags even, whatever you incur, whatever you're spending for the packaging for your spices to sell them, that too is a business expense and a tax deduction because that's an expense, obviously. So however you determine to do that, and normally a lot of times people go with the glass bottles with a shaker lid, or they'll go with some type of a, of a uh, rectangular tin box too, I've seen for spices, that is an expense. So keep the receipts for your packaging. That is also a tax deduction. Number seven, labels. Now, whether you print your own labels, you're buying them and printing them at home, or you're having somebody else print them for you, keep your receipts because all of the label expenses for the labels that are going on the spice packaging, that too is a tax deduction. Number eight, ingredients. Obviously, yes, you're creating a spice ingredient. If you're creating your own spice blend, if you're simply buying blended spices and then repackaging them and put your name on it, 
doesn't matter. You are buying an ingredient that you're using to create a finalized product. So number eight is ingredients. Keep your receipts for all of your ingredients. That too is a tax deduction. Number nine, shipping boxes and supplies. Now, if you're running an e-commerce business, if you're running any type of business that incurs a shipping box or shipping supplies, packing paper, bubble wrap, whatever it is, even tape, and you're shipping that product, that is operating your business. And if you didn't know, that is a tax deductible expense because that is part of the expense of wrapping, of running your business. Number 10, any office supplies, ink or paper you may have. If you also buy printers, if you buy a brand new laptop and that laptop is being used for your business, guess what? That is an expense for your business. If you're using printer, well, you're gonna have ink, you're gonna have paper, you're gonna have supplies. That is number 10, you're gonna have office supplies, keep your receipts for everything, that is a business expense as well. Number 11, this is the really good one. If you're starting a spice business at home, which predominantly most of you may be, uh, you have a mortgage or you have rent, guess what? A portion of that is actually used for your business expense to be written off. Double check with your accountant, explain to them that you're operating a business from home, happens to be a spice business and your mortgage is X amount of dollars, how much can I get to be written off? Or I'm renting, how much of my rent can I use? Because again, that is where your business is dwelling and that is where your business starts and you're operating within the actual confines of your building. And that is your home or your apartment or wherever it may be. Number 12, commercial license. Now, this applies to someone, if you're actually gonna start a spice business not at home, and you potentially are renting a commercial space that has to be inspected by the Department of Agriculture or the Health Department, and you have a large facility, et cetera, et cetera, that's gonna be a commercial license you need to have. Normally, that's an annual license, and that is something that will be a good portion of your expenses when it comes to business license and permits. So your commercial license is something that, too, is an expense. Number 13, food business insurance. And no matter if you're making spices, candies, chocolate pretzels, it doesn't matter. If you're producing a food product, you need, need to have food business insurance. Guess what? You pay that every month, right? Okay, well, that is an expense. You need to also keep receipts for that and show your accountant that you are paying for a food business insurance policy. This has nothing to do with your homeowner's policy. This has nothing to do with your car policy, none of that. Every food business needs to be insured. Otherwise, you're incurring a lot of risk. Number 14, workers' compensation. If you're paying workers' compensation, if you have one employee, two employees, three, five, six, ten, it doesn't matter. If you've got a workers' compensation policy on your business, you need to keep track of that expense because, again, that is an expense for your spice business. Number 15, this may sound odd, but believe it or not, it's expensive. And I know from firsthand experience when I ran a bakery and I own my own Italian bakery, trash removal. Commercial trash removal can be two, three hundred, even four hundred dollars a month, even or more. That large dumpster outside, when you rent that facility and you've got that commercial property, it has to be picked up and that costs money. Guess what? That's part of your expense too. You need to keep track of that as well. Number 16, your electricity, electric bill. This is obviously applies to both commercial properties or even a home-based business. Yes, believe it or not, a portion of your electricity, which is being used for you to create your spice business at home, that electric bill is a deduction. Now, there's a set percentage, there's a certain amount. Again, double check with your accountant. I'm not an accountant, so I can't tell you the percentage, but that is something else that uses expense. Okay, number 17, home office. If you have a space within your home, not the space where you're making the actual spices, not the place where you're producing the product and sealing it and all that stuff. If you have a home office, a bedroom that you've turned into an office dedicated to your specific spice business and you're starting from home, guess what? That portion of the square footage of your home can be tax deductible. Number 18, equipment used for your spices. Now, if you're using any type of equipment for sealing the bags, weighing the bags, if you have scales, if you've got heat sealing machines, if you have anything that you're using that is equipment related to your spice business or you bought equipment that you need, if it's a certain type of funnels for sealing up the bags or a heat sealer for the actual lid or container, those pieces of equipment for your business is tax deductible, okay? Number 19, ads online. Now, if you're operating an online business or you're simply promoting your retail store, if you have a retail spice business, great, but you're running ads on Facebook and Google, those are considered advertising fees and advertising ads. Those ads cost money, and if you keep track of those, keep the receipts for those ads when they're run and they're completed, those are gonna be a, another tax deduction for your spice business. Now. Number 20, if you're starting at home and you go to local events, guess what? There are expenses you will incur by going to local events. 
these are events like farmers markets, festivals, maybe a wine tasting, maybe a food and food and music festival, whatever it may be, but you're actually incurring gas, you're incurring a tent, travel, uh, you make brochures, you're using your vehicle, everything that is used in part of your business, delivering those spices to a local event and selling them, that's going to incur a business expense. If you travel, let's say you go to another town within your, your state, another city within your state, and you stay at a hotel, and you've got all this stuff that you're gonna be putting up for your event, and you're selling spices, all of these things are going to be tax deductible. Okay, so keep track of all the receipts. If you create a brochure to help promote when you're at the event, you hand out brochures or business cards, hey, all of that is expenses. You need to keep track of them. Number 21, fees paid to attend those local events. Now, if you go to a local event, guess what? They're not free. Predominantly, the, the local events like farmer's markets are going to incur some type of fee or percentage of your sales. If you go to a farmer's market and they don't have a fee, they just simply say, hey, Damien, you give me 10% of what you sell over the next two days for the weekend, and that's the fee. Well, guess what? Those are fees incurred uh, operating a business at an event. You need to keep track of those fees and get a receipt for those fees once you've paid that. That is part of the Spice Business Tax Deductions list. Number 22. Are you taking a debit card, credit card? Guess what? There are fees for processing those. And if you're at an event and you're taking someone's debit card, there's normally a 25 to 3% fee to process that transaction. Those fees are expenses, again, that are tax deductions because you're operating a business. You are paying those fees, okay? Not the customer. You're actually paying those. So those fees are also considered a tax deduction. 23. Do you sell online? Well, PayPal or Stripe or a card processing business is going to take a portion of every sale too, by the way. If you sell on Shopify, you're not only going to have your hosting every month, but you're going to have to pay Stripe, PayPal, or even Shopify to process the orders. So if you're selling spices online, if hey, if you're on Amazon selling spices, guess what? Amazon's going to charge you a fee. You sell them on eBay or Etsy, you're going to get a fee. All of those fees are expenses. Those are costs incurred. Now, Specifically, again, get in touch with your accountant and find out how you actually write that down, how is it itemized, what kind of form you may need, but those are expenses to process the payment. Number 24, gas and mileage. Now, if you're going to local events locally, you're gonna pretty much use a, your own vehicle. If you use your vehicle, they're going to allot you a certain amount of mileage every year that you can write off, and a certain amount of gas, the gas that you're using, the receipts, if you're traveling halfway across the state for a spice business, festival or whatever, well, guess what? All that gas that you're using to get there is part of the expense. So gas and mileage is something that you need to be aware of. Keep your receipts as well. Number 25, if you sell on Amazon, Etsy, or eBay, as I had just mentioned before, those, out, those other platforms also have seller fees. Not only seller fees for the transactions, but they're going to charge you a monthly fee. For instance, on Amazon, I believe it's $39.99 a month just to have a professional seller's account. That is $40 a month, no matter if you sell a dollar or sell $10 million a month. You're gonna have fees on eBay, Etsy, and Amazon, and those fees that you're incurring to operate an online business to sell spices, yes, those are expenses. Number 26, spices and any shipping. Now, if you buy, let's go back to the one we had mentioned before about ingredients. If you're buying ingredients, spices online, a lot of people don't realize this, but if you're getting them from a wholesaler, you're getting like 700 pounds of you know, a spice blend, whatever it may be, you're going to have a shipping fee. Do not count just the amount for the ingredient and the spice. You need to also add on to it the shipping. If they're charging you $100 to ship, guess what? It's not $700 in spices, it's $800 in spices. Number 27, last but not least, the phone and internet. This can be either and for a commercial place or if you're working from home. If you're selling spices from home and you're just getting started, guess what? Your phone and your internet are being used for your business portion of that it can be written off as a tax deduction as well and that rounds out our 27 spice business tax deductions if you're just starting a spice business and you definitely want to be aware of them okay so if you've ever asked yourself is it profitable to start a spice business it definitely it definitely is and definitely can be but you need to be aware of what your expenses are if you have any more questions about these and tax deductions do let us know down below and we will get to it as soon as possible see you guys in our next video